Pradesh, Nizamabad district. An interior area near some forests. Late evening, last week. A mesmerized crowd. A faith healer who will exorcise a spirit. Two villagers who have become bankrupt because of bad harvests. They believe this evening the spirits will be satiated. Crops will be good. Be warned, the shots that follow are difficult to watch. Bhutu Raja, Bhut Raja is not the only one who controls the minds of Nizamabad's 10 lakh adults. So do others who play on these lives, lives made fragile by poverty and superstition. Such ignorance is destroying the innocent but benefiting the cunning in the district. Telangana's large landowners, known as Jagirdars, Maktidars and Patels, have traditionally forced generations of peasant families into bonded labour. Even today, the contracts between the bigger landlords and the peasants have elements of bondedness. This district is what is known as an affected area, where Naxalites have gained a foothold in mainstream village society. People get killed very often. It's a fight against the government. The police fires at us, we fire back. There's no other way because laborers are starving and landlords hold 100 acres each. So some villagers protect us. And it's in these hamlets, in little mud houses, that jogins have been forced to practice prostitution. A jogin, a small girl in the family who is dedicated to the goddess, and village men and visitors await her adolescence as wolves await their prey. Her life is condemned from the day the Poturaja anoints her. A few pockets are dominated by Muslims, where women are confined to the char diwari, the four walls of the house. Nizamabad also has three lakh beery workers. They struggle for 16 hours a day. Many contract TB, but their need and the factory owner's high profits combine to sustain this exploitation. A people resigned to fate. Not surprising that in this district, 65 out of 100 persons had never been to school. And the end of the road was not in sight. If it was, it was just a dead end. But suddenly, three years ago, a new call was given by the people of Kerala in the south. That to read and write is a human right, and to teach is a human duty. And two years later, the entire state was declared literate. In time, Nizamabad also heard about the new winds of literacy blowing across the country and took up the challenge. School children were amongst the first to respond. We will teach, they pledged. Soon, adults were also drawn into the new movement. Many were reminded of the independence movement. The concept was clear. People would teach people and do it in six months. They would not wait for the government to start the classes. They would arrange the space and get oil lamps. Government would provide books. The district administration lost no time. They set up training camps to teach the volunteers about handling adults. The lessons were to be not only about reading and writing, but about bonded labor, untouchability, hakkalu, people's rights, law courts, 
women's rights, health. The training lasted three to four days. Many lost a week's wages, but did not grudge the loss. They said, we are rediscovering ourselves, that we are useful to others. And so, a small body of officials and non-officials was set up as a core team to introduce universal literacy. Local voluntary agencies joined. All odds were against it, except the desperation of the ordinary person to learn. Word went out. Nobody between the ages of 15 to 35, man or woman, is to remain illiterate. Don't miss the chance of attending the literacy class. This could be the push that will finally make life move forward. In the meanwhile, 45,000 literates with at least class 7 education had applied at panchayat offices. Each person willing to teach 10 learners for two hours a day for six months, all without payment. Rickshaw pullers, Students, shopkeepers, holy men, housewives were ready to teach, but the learners were at first suspicious of the true intentions of the program. So the campaign appealed to local talent to generate trust. Audience swells, admires, just the right psychological moment to tell people about the new program. Also, folk drama uses ancient tales to excite the imagination and to spark a desire to read the stories oneself. <laughs> The campaign to raise awareness about literacy was boisterous and colorful. But the teaching and learning began quietly, low keyed, on a December night in 1991. Agricultural laborers and jogins take children to class. Some women are clearly above 35 years old, but nobody in their class stops them from learning. Yet people at home are not so happy. How long will my family taunt me for going to school at this age? Let them. I want to learn. It's my deep desire. Muslim women not only ventured out of home to class, but they stayed late hours. We took these shots at 11 at night. And at midnight, these are the sounds that poured out onto small village roads from makeshift classrooms which learners built themselves, as much to keep out the cold as to keep in the new magic of the written word. <laughs> Urdu, Marathi, Telugu. The volunteers teach in these three mother tongues. In a Telugu speaking area, the first floor balcony of a beauty factory is packed. Women rollers place a timepiece in their tray to push themselves to produce as much and as fast as they can. They don't like breaks in work. They get impatient because an interruption in beauty rolling could make the difference between food and starvation. Yet, even they agreed to a half-hour midday break to study. Volunteers move carefully, making sure that they neither crush the beeries nor break the spirit of these women who are still afraid that if they spend time studying, their families will eat less. It's hot and humid, and the balcony could collapse. Yet, learners and volunteers don't seem to care. Read and roll. That's the motto. But do people really learn in the first few months? 
Despite four months of teaching, very few learners have actually reached the official technical norms of literacy, that is, being able to read 30 words per minute with comprehension and to write eight words per minute. But the system capitalizes on even the smallest progress made by an individual and builds on innate skills. And already in May this year, the first crucial signs of literacy are visible here and there. Nobody used to care for daughters. A son was the apple of the eye. But not now, because daughters look after parents as well as sons do. Forests give us everything from water to matchsticks. If you destroy trees, you are destroying your family. The history of our nation is not the one the British wrote. The British made us look at each other with suspicion. We are one people. So much of social awareness and so much of enthusiasm has been generated in the learners. There's a dramatic change in their perception. And this is the biggest achievement of ours. Every district which has implemented the total literacy campaign is convinced that it has achieved big goals, that the program is exceptionally successful in that district. But what are the measures of success? Of intangibles such as independence, confidence and initiative? Where has the literacy program left the individual? We bring you interviews we took when the classes were on in May 92 and then shots of the same persons three months later in August when we returned to Nizamabad to see what happens to the individual when the six-month courses have concluded. A vendor of biscuits and sweets in a literacy class in May. I've never been able to talk to educated people. My business has suffered because I can't write accounts. I will never get this opportunity of free learning again. Learning is a passion. And in August, our camera spots a familiar cyclist on his business rounds. And at another shop, the vendor's confidence is quite obvious. In the same literacy class in May, sat a man who was struggling to run a small bakery. My main problem is that I cannot write down orders and have to remember them. Now people want birthday cakes even in this small place. I have to get a literate person to write the words for the cake and then I copy. But I make many mistakes. They abuse me. That's why I'm studying. And then in August, we see the baker dealing with a customer. Back in May, near a village market, we see a few women waiting for a bus. And once in a while, other villagers look at them pointedly. These are jogins, traditional prostitutes. They will travel for an hour and then spend six to seven hours in a special literacy class. They can go only once a week. On the other days, they earn. Some of them work in beauty factories. Others work as agricultural laborer. And despite their best efforts to break away, the traditional occupation hounds them. But in August, <laughs> I had to beat my mother. I wanted to stop this jogging work. She would not let me stop. They told me in the literacy class that it is bad. It's the first time I realized that it's so bad. Truck drivers came, jeep drivers, 
office workers, whoever had money came and gave 20 rupees or 50 rupees to my mother. Now I've started working in the paddy fields. But isn't it tough to start working in the fields in the sun now? No, the other work is terrible. Men are drunk and it's no life. I want to change everything. A madam has put my daughter into school. I don't know who her father is, but I will work hard to send her to college. If anybody calls me Jogin, I'll beat them. I'm angry about all these past years. I'm going to get married and stop all this. Why should I remain a Jogin? If anybody forces me for Jogin work, I tell the panchayat and the police, and if they don't listen, I go straight to the sub-collector. I've learned that if I work hard as a manual worker, I will be independent. Otherwise, I will become a beggar. Miles to go, but the journey has begun not only for Jogins, but for many women. In Bodhan, a small market town in Nizamabad, a young man told us in May that he was blind. But our camera saw that he was sighted. Why do you call yourself blind? Everything is hidden in the written word. I can't see the written word, so I can't see anything. That's why I'm blind. I've come to this class to get my sight. I work as a helper in a welding shop. My seat takes me to Nizamabad to buy material and people say, Why have you brought this fool with you? What does he know? People don't let you live. And in August, we went back to the shop where he worked. He had left and set up his own shop. He was copying grill designs and noting measurements. There's a lot of business. Has he taken on too much? Time will tell. But he's not blind anymore. A bit of education does not change an adult. But does it make him turn a corner? A family of eight persons lives in one room on this street. The father sells pan. He didn't give me money to feed so many children. I manage somehow, but it's wretched. Their father gets drunk and beats me. To escape the beating, I went to the literacy class. There I learned so much about how to look after the children and to earn something. And I took a few of the children along. We are poor. I did drink and beat her. I went to the class to make fun of them. But the atmosphere was so refined. I thought, if I can study, life will have different colors. My occupation will never change, but my culture has changed. Classes were so accessible that they evoked a deep response. A mother in a small village has withdrawn her son from begging, which was a major source of income for the family. We went through difficult times because my son started studying in the night class. We will eat once a day, but he will study. He won't beg. Those days are gone forever. It's clear that individuals have gained by the literacy class. But it's equally clear that every illiterate in Nizamabad has certainly not attended these classes because hunger, homelessness and custom have prevented them. But even so, are some general changes on the way? In the Muslim community, people do not want family planning operations. But I teach them the opposite, that is, to control the number of children they have. There's a lesson in the third primer book on the results of overcrowding. But as a volunteer in a literacy class, if you teach all this, don't community leaders criticize you openly? 
No, no. Young girls are educated and their husbands are a bit understanding. Their in-laws or conservative relatives may not be, but I will keep teaching what is right. But is this literacy program doing right by those who need it most? Is it sensitive? Has the program had any effect on children or have they met the usual indifference? Closed minds at open doors? The collector says, Last two months we have found a tremendous increase in the enrollment and in the uh, attendance of uh, children in the schools. In fact, it has gone up by 25%. All those children who were staying away from school were becoming cripples, some physically too. But newly literate parents have now decided that the child must divert some time from buffaloes to books. These villages where the literacy centers ran are on the routine beat of Naxalites. Have the militants seen merit in the program or have they tried to disrupt it? First give the people food, then education. In six months, what can the poor learn? They cannot learn about inequality. Anyway, we neither support nor oppose the program because the party cannot start schools since we are in hiding. We don't harm the literacy team, but some officers are scared. They just don't go to the villages. Not at all. In fact, our officers have gone to each and every nook and corner of the district. And the Pragati Patham, which is one of the best indicators of the development in the district, we stood number one in Andhra Pradesh. Our officers, once they go to a village, they don't talk only about the literacy per se, they also talk about development activities. But the roots of backwardness lie deep. Blind faith cannot be vanquished overnight. Yet Nizamabad's literacy program is trying doggedly although success seems to be only symbolic so far. Potraju, I won't go to him if my child has diarrhea, but if a spirit possesses him, then what can I do? Can't fight deep-seated prejudices, but the government claims that it has fought death with literacy, or specifically with information on water. A shortage of drinking water. Uh, in spite of that, we had... Uh, a very, uh, practically 50% uh, of gastroenteritis cases, that's all. But uh, deaths have still occurred on account of gastroenteritis, haven't they? Unfortunately, it has occurred. But you know where it was, uh, I mean, it's very much reduced. By how much would you say? 50%. When the death count falls in a year without any improvement in health services, it's time to sit up and take note of a literacy program which is changing people's understanding of what they can do for themselves. And it's time to raise inconvenient questions about the future of this important literacy program. Why is the dropout rate high? Why have some learners only studied for one month and not for six months? These are weaknesses of the program which we've seen in other districts too. Chances are that new learners may lapse back into illiteracy, a precarious foothold on knowledge. Learners know this and appeal for continued teaching. If the center closes and I don't practice, I'll forget everything. But for me, this is only the beginning. I want to write poetry. I don't have electricity, so now I light a wick lamp and study at home. But I fear I will forget slowly. I would love to study more. But who will teach me now that the class is over? And the government's response? Our basic motive is that from the guided learning, they should move on to the self-learning. And uh, we hope that in about 40 hours, or maybe in a span of about three to four months, they should be in a position to start reading themselves. From guided learning to self-learning, will the new literate actually be able to teach themselves? Perhaps not, if they are alone and bent double by poverty. But if some persons guide and goad, the knowledge may not slip away. Do Nizamabad's villages have such inspiring persons, live wires who will dismiss all self-doubt? Indeed, yes. Many volunteers admit frankly to a shraddha, junoon, obsession to keep teaching 
until the lesson is truly learned. They have already committed themselves to 40 hours, even more of their time, over the next six months at a Chaitanya Kendram, the government's post literacy center, one for every 50 neoliterates. Here, twice a week, people will read with the volunteers' help, discuss, and raise controversial issues, such as the role of the police station and the mandal structure. A people teaching its own people. The government only needs to be a catalyst. Don't do things for the people, Nizamabad seems to say. Create circumstances that tap the genius within. But even the post-literacy phase seems indifferent to the young illiterates of Nizamabad. The 9 to 14 year old shepherds, animal keepers, girls confined to the courtyard of the house, to those whose adolescent dreams are already colourless. Officials say that their responses are too quick. They unnerve older learners, so they can't sit in the same class. Special schemes for teaching them do exist, but remain on the shelf. So they continue to move backward. But now, a sub-collector of Nizamabad, Social pressure. the newly literate parents are demanding education for these teenagers. They will prod us officers to restart the teenagers' classes under other programs. I don't need a rupee from the government. My villagers will do it. The children will be literate in 12 months. A significant change will happen in this year. If the government has not given you one rupee, then you will guarantee it. हम हमारे उसपे नहीं हमारे जो लोगों का रेस्पॉन्स है उसके बेसिस पे गारंटी गारंटी ही समझिए कैन यू एन इंडिविजुअल ब्रिज द गल्फ बिटवीन योर हेल्पलेसनेस एंड योर फुल पोटेंशियल यू कैन इन निजामाबाद वाय द लिटरेसी कैंपेन कैन यू अ विलेज ब्रिज द गल्फ बिटवीन द इलिटरेट एंड द लिटरेट यू कैन can a literacy program provide an alternative form of development? Not development by doling or by giving, but development by enabling? It can, as in this district. Here they are trying out a self-driven literacy program for self-driven development. Can every district get ahead by tapping its own genius? You know the answer. You can. So, why are we waiting?